So I think to address that question, let me actually kill Ableton and let's open up VCV instead. So give me a second while I reconfigure um, the stream. I could even do it. I could even do it inside. Inside. No, that's going to be a fucking story. Let's let's just do a VCV. All right. So. Give me a second to address that question. Do it to VCV. Right, so first thing is, let's just make sure that this is working. Hello. Um, so I'm just going to make a pat. And let's take this output here. Mm -hmm. It looks to have audio. I just want to check my OBS and see that we are. Okay, we're not, we're not broadcasting now. Why is that? There we go. Got audio. <laughs> Holy shit, VCV works live. Ah, oh, I fucking love this. This is too good. All right, so now let's go. Yeah. And let's load rack. Oh. Okay, I'm going to turn this horrible oscillator down. All right, guys, so I'm answering, uh, just, just to repeat the question, um, I'm answering um, Avation's question, which is basically, how do you make more rhythmically interesting modular sequences, okay? Hopefully, just let me know if there's any problems with the audio. I hear audio, I see it on the stream. So I, I, think, I think we are good, right? Let's just turn this up. Yes, we are good, we've got audio. All right, so I'm going to do a really, really something quite simple, which is I've got uh, obviously a platz, and it's in sort of default mode. Okay, simple like square, square, where we can make it sorry, but I'm gonna leave that in the middle. Okay, and I'll put a little bit of melodic, Jesus Christ, let me just turn that down. All right, firstly, I'm gonna put a filter into the path. Okay, um, and I'll take this guy out. And let's also have a VCA. Just ignore everything in this patch. It's all just like old stuff that I'm not even going to use. I'll probably delete most of it, but some of them are like neutral components. Okay, so I'm going to take the, the output, the VCA. Let's take the VCA back into the mixer. And I'll just take some top end off of there. All right, and I'm going to run this whole thing off a clock. All right, an internal clock. So. Um, I'm going to feed a 1 over 16 clock and I'm going to take it into a Euclidean sequencer. I love Euclidean sequencers. It's just an excellent way to add rhythmic intensity to a patch, okay? So this is a straight 1 over 16 clock because it's 120 BPM times 4 means 1 over 16. This would be 1 over 4. That would be 1 over 8 and this would be 1 over 16. So now we've got a 1 over 16 clock coming into the Euclidean sequencer. I'm going to run it and over here I'm going to say the total amount of hits is going to be, let's use a strange number, like 24, just three bars. And um, this control says how many of those hits are occupied. All right. And then I'm going to take a gate and I'm going to trigger from that Euclidean sequence, I'm going to trigger an ASR. And we're going to take the gate out into the ADSR and I'm going to have that ADSR effect affect the VCA. Okay. Okay, so already you can hear that the pulse is kind of interesting. Now, we normally duplicate that. And also, 
I'll put the gate to affect the filter envelope as well, right? I'll make that slightly more punchy. I'll just have that. Control FM. Take it up. Okay, so now if I put, let's duplicate this. All right, and let's just give it a normal trigger. It'll be one over four, so just to kick mode, is that one. All right, and I'll put that in the mixer. Okay, now you only hear it with the 4-4. Four, four. How cool that Euclidean rhythm is. And I'm gonna show you some stuff that we can do with the Euclidean rhythm. All right, um, but let me get a chronoblob. Okay, nice delay. Delay can also add a lot of rhythm, right? So firstly, I could just change and I want to clean this up because it's driving me fucking nuts. Aha. She liked that. All right, cool. So I'm going to wire the delay. I'll explain my signal flow to you in a minute. Why the delay here? I'm going to take a copy of this voice. Enter here. From. Oh, yeah. Shit be sexy. Uh, hold on a second. Ah. What else if I did turn it up? Ooh, that's sexy. So, I don't know if you guys can see, but what's happening here, and it's very cool, is that one, we've, we've got, so we've got a single oscillator, okay? Here's the, the kick oscillator, so let's leave this, right? Here is the oscillator that's generating that, that tone, okay? And right now there's no rhythm, there, there's no melody at all. I'm gonna put the melody in now, so let's just leave the, 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 the pitch side of it away, all right? This is purely a gating system for a single oscillator, okay? So, <clears throat> we've got a single oscillator, the gate time of the VCA to open the VCA is being triggered by the Euclidean sequence, which I really, really dig, okay? Super, super cool. So the Euclidean sequencer is um, is triggering this, okay? And it's also duplicated to trigger the filter envelope, right? Now, if I change the um, Euclidean time, like the hit amount, it'll change the rhythm. Okay, so it's a very cool way to switch up the rhythm. Oh, I love, I love Euclidean. There's something about these rhythms. They're very hypnotic. They've almost got a polyrhythmic quality, but they are polymetric. They do use polymetric mathematics. It's not full polyrhythms, but it is polymeter, polymetric. Yes, you can hear how sexy that is, right? Now for additional rhythmic variation, what I'm doing is I've got a copy of that voice that's going to um, uh, a VCA. And when the VCA is open, it's sending it to a delay, right? And the delay is clocked. Now you can actually have an LFO that's gonna modulate that delay time, okay? And that just adds some like weird rhythmic intensity. You can also have that, that delay not clocked. So we could say, let's modulate the left and the right. And let's just chill that out, uh, chill that out, dog. Okay, so now I'm modulating the left and potentially the right in different ways. I need that in stereo. And you get that nice uh, feedback as well, which is I love. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Now, what's even cooler is maybe we do Another sound with the same Euclidean sequencer, right? So you can have a plate, another plat. Where are you, baby? All right, let's have another plat. I'll have a joint, yeah. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. My Patreons know there's not a single person who's not a stoner. Okay, so I'm gonna take hats. Just an example of what we can do with this Euclidean sequences. I'll, I'll use the, the rests, 
right? I use the wrists to trigger the hat. Ooh, shit. That's nice. Nice techno vibe. Very nice. Okay, now let's take this LFO, maybe. Let's take this LFO. Let's modulate them off. Right now, if I change the pattern on the Euclidean sequencer, and remember, there's the, there's no melody right now here. This is just C. It's just just the root note. If I change the pattern on the Euclidean, let's just pitch this up a bit. Okay, if I change the pattern on the Euclidean sequencer, check it this. See, so these patterns are sort of linked to each other in the wrist and the timing and the gate. All right, so that's one answer to your question. I hope that answers your question, Ovation, which is how, you know, how can we create more interesting stuff? How can we create more interesting rhythms? Euclidean sequencing is, is one way. Obviously, setting an offset on the clock would be another way. Let me just stop this. Another really common way to set, to set uh, an offset on the clock um, you just take that one over 16 clock and you just literally add swing to it, right? Because there's swing on the clock devices. If you're sending a clock in from Ableton, then you would take that one over 16 pulse and you would actually manually offset a shuffle. Now, the more creative you get with that clock pulse, if you, if you open up a one over 16 pulse and you manually offset every second 16th, a few milliseconds, then you'll start getting like a manual shuffle. Now, if you feed that in as the root clock or the modular devices, you're obviously going to start getting timing variations. Another thing that would work is like to change this root clock to triplet, stuff like that. So let's, I mean, that'd probably be way crazy, but let's try it. <laughs> Side trance. Okay, that is, that is mad because the whole thing's gone to triplet now. It's a bit much. Or half time. I kind of like it in some strange way. Basin. Get another place for a bass. Like, let's use basil. I like basil for a, for a bass oscillator. And let's just take it into a channel on the mixer. A lot of shit is taking up a lot of space on my mixer, and I don't know what it is. Now, this is rubbish. Right, we got a nice bass oscillator there. Now what's cool is I'm actually just gonna set the bass oscillator to play, you know, from MIDI CV. I'll just play it with the mini log, which could be cool. Let's set the mini log out and let me take the uh, volt per octave into here. Yeah. Oh, very nice. you guys are listening to those headphones there's quite a lot of nice uh, bass frequency I'm just gonna extend the kick as well Put a little um, BCA in the path of that bass. Talking about rhythmic interesting as well, you know, LFOs can do a lot, right? I'm just gonna take that bass out into a, into a BCA, right? Let's put it like an octave up. All right, now let's bring in an LFO. Ah, cool, I like it. Jeez, guys, the delay. 
delay is pretty long, but uh, we're getting there, right? Um, so, so you see how cool the fucking Euclidean sequence is? Because, you know, if I get bored, I'll take this clock back to, to full time now. And then we're going to get funky, right? Yeah, and just, just side note, I'm really enjoying having MIDI plugged in, okay? I'm going to show you guys a, a generative chord patch that I made at the end of this lesson. Well, you set up these really complicated things, but you don't input pitch. You set up these really complicated gate routines where you've got all this randomization on the delay and stuff, and then you have to play a chord to sort of input melody, which I'll demonstrate for you in a, in a minute. It's a very exciting concept. Okay, so what was I doing? Okay, so let's let's take a, an LFO. Let's get one of these guys, right? And I'm gonna clock the LFO. I think we'll clock it on one over 16. I'll take it down. And let's take that and let's have it affect the BCA of the bass, right? So now we're sort of getting this again polymetric, polyrhythmic sort of feeling. Now I can take another LFO um, and I'm, I'm going to have this on free time and I'm going to have this modulate FM of this, right? So it's a, a dull LFO. getting that nice mod of the bass. All right, and we've also got a bit of free time modulation. I like it, it's cool. That's kind of like, a, I like the uh, basil because it gives you almost like a bass guitar tone. That's getting quite a... And obviously we'd have LFOs that are modulating everything, you know. Okay, so that, that's one example. Now, I definitely have a noise oscillator that's sort of doing that as well. Let's um, make a little white noise. And that's a little bit aggressive. All right, now again, this doesn't have to be a full, a full level modulation. It could be a bit more subtle. So let's duplicate the VCA. And let's get that voltage just coming in and VCAing a little bit before. All right, we'll just take it down a notch, like. All right, now we're gonna need an offset as well. See, it's the little, it's the little details, guys. The little details that make things sound great. So I'll take this now before it hits. Then I'll just offset it. Offset CV, scale CV, input, output. There we go. Right now, <laughs> let's take the clock back to four. Uh, that lead is criminally dry. Let's get a, a, a send on the reverb. Let's switch the, the hits up. That's a bit weird. Oh, there we go. There's my rhythm. I like that. That's that's what I like from the Euclidean sequences. A bit more manic energy, you know. Right now, guys. As I said, this is only a gate. This is a single oscillator, and it's a gate. 
and I'm just gonna increase this FM a bit. Now I must say about this bass line, just uh, let me let me stop that quickly. I love, you can hear how cool this uh, timing is. I've kind of got it on solo right now, all right? You can hear how cool that timing is. Would I use that as the only bass sound? No, I wouldn't. I'd probably have something stabilizing, like bump, 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 something quite rhythmic. And because of the way that this is modulating, because it's so wild, I'd probably have this as a secondary bass line, right? Now, so I'd have like a yeah, very simple, basic, structured, rhythmic bass, and this would sort of be a second bass line. I'm doing that in a lot of the new tracks on the new EPs and the new album, is I'm writing, um, I'm writing two bass lines, one which is a bit more stable, and then because you can do so much cool stuff with timing in the low end in modular, having a second bass that's kind of wobbly and off time and a bit more complicated, all right? So really, really digging that, okay? Again, we don't have any pitch in the system at all, right? This is just, it's just in C. There's no pitch other than the pitches I'm playing in the in the bottom end. So let's get a little ADDR. I've already got the um, basic setup here. I'm gonna take a VCA again, like if you, I'm gonna keep building this pitch system on the Patreon hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking um, an ADDR. We're gonna clock the ADDR. Um, let's clock it at, yeah, let's clock it at one over four. I'll make a little melody, melody shape. Let's go high, mid, low, high. And then high, mid, low high I'll take that out into the VCA from the VCA into the quantizer and from the quantizer where's that going I don't know my friend from the quantizer we're going to take it into the vault per octave of that first bass Jesus Christ just just Sorry, excuse the interruption. Let's turn my phone off. Ah, ah, I fucked the whole thing. Sorry, I was I was really in the middle of a thesis there. All right, let's run this again. Oh, I do like that. All right, so now I've introduced pitch, so we can go. Oh, good God, that's so sexy. Oh my good Lord. You can see guys that as I um, scale the VCA, I'm just getting like impossible amounts of melodic variation here. Which again, I've done in every single video on the YouTube and the Patreon. I, I keep using this concept, ADDR, VCA, Quantizer, Volt Per Octave, right? But it's just super cool. There we go, I love that point in the melody. Right now I do love that bass, but I'm gonna mute it for a second because I'm gonna bring that LFO back. Now we got this really, really nice melodic element. All right, let's do something slightly more stable on the bass. I'm just gonna, let's, let's low, let's just do a plats, simple. All right, so I'm gonna do it in sawtooth mode. Yeah. 
guys, can we just have a moment to appreciate um, how fucking absolutely cool the system is, right? It's so stable. Like I'm loading up oscillators here, we're doing filters, I've got melodies, we got listen to this response of the VCI. I mean, I just cannot believe how cool OPS is. That, that we can do this live is just insane. Um, okay, anyway, enough about that. What is going on? This doesn't seem to be being used. I don't know what this is. Hold on. Okay, cool. Let me get this uh, baseline here. Nice bass tone, I'm gonna give it some harmonics. Now just talking about rhythm and everything not being boring, I mean you can also use um, you can also use a Euclidean sequence for this. We could also use something simple like this is where the trigger sequence is great. The laying down repetitive. I already had one of those, sorry, I already have a trigger sequence. So let's clock it. Let's clock it at one over one over sixteen. I'm gonna put something like really simple, like three and six pattern right because we need something structured with all this madness and I'm gonna have that um, trigger an ADSR envelope all right um, which is gonna sexy not a cigarette by the way there's a joint we just out of Rizla don't judge me all right let's have let's have the trigger sequencer trigger the the ADSR all right ADSR open the VCA. Here we go. All right, now that is super stable. I love that. Okay, so let's say that that's our stable base. Now that's going to really assist me when I want to bring this base back in. Yeah, we could just go with this VCA the whole day, the whole night. I mean, if you're playing live, this is what I want to do live. It's All right, now what I should do is I should duplicate this Volt per octave and I should have it coming into both bass lines at the same time. What do you guys think? So now we can play the LFO and... Uh -huh. No, don't, 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 don't clip. Oh my God, that is too sick. Just need to unmod the...
now you can start sort of getting relationship between the way that the VCA is opening and the keys that you're playing in the bass. And again, when I play a bass key, it's um, it's um, sending the, the pitch message to both the um, oscillator one that's running the bass, the simple oscillator, and the more complex one. We can have a little bit more FM now, now that this is a secondary bass. I'd probably increase the amount of FM that's happening here. So let's let's do this. Yeah, because I want that pretty fucking wild. Okay, it's, 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 it's fucking wild, guys. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is like, like a crazy session for just getting wild ideas, but... It's, it's effective, it's really cool. I mean, we've been here for 20 minutes and we have like a full sketch for a song. Carried away. Let's calm it down. Let's take it down a notch. <laughs> Where's that fucking hi hat oscillator? I've lost me hi hat. I can't find me hi hat. There he is. we can still do there's a lot we can still do whoa let me whew, calm down we turn that oscillator down but a fat jam there that was fun um where are you my friend wobbly it's the wobble there okay so we're having a lot of fun here guys um you can see that this is a simple two or three oscillators it's all just plats basically but having a lot of fun with um moving the position of the vca running a sequence live and then running sort of a stable bass sound and then also running a counter rhythm. Also at the heart of this patch is the Euclidean sequencer and that sort of goes back to, to um, the original question which is how can I just get more rhythmically interesting in VCV? And I think this is sort of the answer. Now imagine you have this clocked. This is not running Ableton as the clock. But if you had this patch, let me just stop this resonating. If you had this patch inside Ableton, you could then you know, counter this with a whole bunch of other stuff, all right? So I think that's it. Um, I do not hate side chaining. I resent your accusation. Um, I don't hate side chaining. I just don't side chain in modular because it's there's no real point. I mean, you can. What I do a lot of, and I'll address this in a, in a separate video because it's quite a hardcore setup, and I'd like to prep it. Is I do envelope following, which is an incredible thing. And in fact, if you guys will join me, guys, once a month is not going to cut it anymore on the Patreon. I'm on fire. I want to go all day. If I, if it was up to me, I would stream all day. So this once a month bullshit's going to have to end. So I'm going to have to rethink the Patreon about doing much more often and having maybe a higher tier where we're doing like twice a week classes because that's the kind of mood that I'm in right now. Um, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a video on envelope following, which is sort of like a more like a next level tech, uh, next level of uh, side chaining. Um, and you can do a lot more interesting stuff than just shift volume based on the signal of one. Basically, side chaining takes signal A and it decreases volume of signal B. Now, you could take signal A in an envelope follow and you could make anything happen in signal B. You could change the pitch, you could change the spatial position, you could change a whole bunch of other things. I just want to go through some of the questions here. Um, yeah, seems to be a good vibe here. Um, what's the modular synth, guys? All the oscillators are plats, except the wobble oscillator, which is basal. All right, you can see basal over here is the, it's by Volt. 
the only um, oscillator that I've used. Aside from plats, and I really like plats because again, I have plats in the rack. You can see here, um, there's a plats over here. This is a, a plats in hardware. So I have plats in the rack. Now, as I said to you guys, I'm gonna be uploading a whole bunch of videos. I've been shooting the whole week. I've got about 20 videos on different concepts. Some of them are music theory, some of them are modular. And I did a, a little video where I explained how I port voltage from the hardware to the software rack. Didn't think it was gonna work with OBS couldn't fucking believe it, it worked and the timing was perfect. So I'm gonna be uploading that. Please do let me know what you think of all the, of the new material. And of course, just, yeah, it's all, it's all free. Just like it and share it and comment and tell anyone who's interested in this, we can build up the world's best community of not only VCV, but also electronic music theorists. Um, and yeah, that's it. Let's roll with, uh, if anyone has another question, I mean, otherwise I would argue this has been a massively successful, successful test, but I'm here, I've got the whiteboard you guys see my whiteboard? Not everybody's seen the whiteboard, so let me just show you the ninja of the whiteboard. I'm like a four-year-old with this thing. I love it. Um, I think I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill this patch because it got a bit wily and it's eating my CPU. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the VCV. And you can see now that I have the whiteboard, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So. As I know, should be able, should be able to draw. Yes, draw. Yeah, I can draw. All right, thanks, Ovation. Absolute pleasure, bro. Absolute pleasure. Um, guys, hit me with uh, with another question if you have it. I'm ready. Um, I'm ready. Is there anyone that wants to ask anything? And if not, um, maybe we'll just do one little sketch, one more sketch. You can tell me Ableton or VCV. At least tell me that. Do you want to see a sketch in Ableton or VCV? Um, and yeah, and then we can we can get on out of here. And um, let's do this again at, 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 the, at the end of the week, next week. Um, let's even do this again this week, guys and maybe send me your questions in advance and we can answer them. It's, it's an advantage for me to do streaming because I want to get the, I want to get the YouTube channel busy. So I'm going to put this live stream with your guys' permission and please let me know in the comments if you're cool with that. I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Um, I'm going to make it uh, public and um, have people sort of tune into what we do in the sessions. But I do promise you that you will get exclusive content of the, Many videos that I've shot, at least I said a certain percentage of them, especially the very complicated ones, are going to be exclusive to the Patreon. I'm going to be driving people from the YouTube to the Patreon as well. So let me know if, you, if you're happy with that. Nobody has any questions for me. <laughs> hmm. Let me get Ableton up and running here. Ah, welcome to the stream, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Um, well, dude, we actually just started. I mean, this is meant to go for, for, for two hours. I've got the whole day. So if there's anything you want to ask, please, please hit me up, good sir. Um, I'm eagerly, eagerly waiting for questions here. Um, but yeah, good to, good to have you joining us. So, so does this mean we've got four people watching? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Somebody ask me a question. Sure, absolutely. All right, we have a question finally. God damn it. Um, let me show you how I repatch that plate, man. Um, so I actually just killed. killed. That's, let me open up VCV again. All right, so what I'll do is whew, I'm going to kill this whole fucking thing. Pretty much all of it. Ryan, you should link your Patreon from the social section, YouTube, and your video description. Yes, I'm going to, my friend. Today, this week is the week where we're doing all these good things. We're going to re put all the links up, put a whole bunch of new content up, link everything properly, update the website, everything, because, um, yeah, I'm a man on a mission. So thank you so much, bro. I appreciate I appreciate the feedback. We're going to get that done. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's repatch. So I'm, I'm going to try and keep this, like, I want to keep this as simple as possible in a single oscillator just so you, can, you guys can start fucking around with some cool rhythmic stuff and believe me euclidean sequences are, are one of a billion things that that we can use here right to to switch rhythm up I can show you so many things right so let's start with the core thing the core thing is always the oscillator so so if you had to sit down and draw the signal path you would always say oscillator into arguably vca into filter some people like to switch that around in some th synthesizers the component order is oscillator filter VCA. I think I prefer it when it goes VCA first. All right, so we're going to go oscillator, VCA is second. I always use ripples because it's the emulation of the mutable filter that I have in hardware and I really like it. So oscillator is going out and it's going out into the filter. Okay, super simple. Now we know that something's got to open and close that VCA, so we're going to make an ADSR, open and close it, and then something is going to trigger this ADSR. So like in technical terms, you should probably go oscillator, to the envelope that's going to open the VCA, VCA to the filter. And we can even have another envelope in between there. This is going to be amp envelope and filter envelope, respectively. Oh, hold on. Yeah, they are seeing VCV, right? Okay, yeah. That's good. We're good. Okay, cool. So, so that's it. So, um, okay, so we connect this to, to the mixer. All right, let's have it there. And hey, okay. yeah, we should be good. We're good, yo. We got audio right. Okay, so yeah, yeah, so I close this filter down a bit. Okay, now, um, what I'm going to do now is in in the last example is just a Euclidean sequencer. So I had a. Had a Euclidean sequencer. I love a lot of these. Random gate sequencer would be cool as well. Another another great thing would be Turing. So let me actually I'll show you two examples here in terms of rhythmic variety. One will be a Euclidean sequencer and another one will be the Turing machine, right? Okay, so let's clock this. So we're gonna take a clock again from one over 16. We're gonna clock the Euclidean sequencer. And I'm gonna have the trigger. I'm gonna say let's do you can do really weird stuff like you can have 19 steps if you want but it does get a little bit weird for for electronic music right i mean let's have something civilized let's have 24 because i want it to be vaguely structured right and let's have quite a lot of hits and then each time there's a hit it's going to trigger the amp envelope and it's going to trigger the filter envelope right and that is going to affect the vca and that is going to affect the fm and the filter respectively all right so there's your basic single <coughs> single oscillator setup. Now, um, when you run this, still got my kick, evidently. I don't know where that, where is that? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's, that's helpful. Oh, there we go. See, I've got that, that, that rhythmicness already from the Euclidean sequence. And again, the Euclidean sequence is opening the VCA and it's also triggering envelope all right so if we had like i don't know we could have this in fm and let's go down like mm. oh really like that
really like that. Beautiful. I like FM for bass. It's cool. Um, okay, so um, now again, what's what's really cool is to have duplicates of the voices, right? So I have like a delay, and I'll set that the output of a VCA goes to this delay on the input, and the output of the delay goes back to the mixer. The sync on the delay is going to be clocked by the master clock, all right? And there's going to be a duplicate of an ADSR envelope that is going to control how this VCA opens, all right? So not every single gate is going to make it through, right? Not every single gate is going to make it through. How will we know which gates make it through? We can put like something like a Bernoulli gate, like a, ch 